Hello and welcome to a new video about my public key controller. Well, I want to realize this now, what uh, my idea from last time. And so this is still working here. We see here the temperature, the temperature uh, um, line from the past hour. Yeah, it's sitting here for days. Yeah, because I'm rendering those this this in the background. You always see this fire basket. This I'm just rendering. Uh, and it, it takes ages. <laughs> uh, and so we, I always put it on the computer. Uh, then we have 30 degree. We are now 31 degree in the, in the exhaust. And now I turned off the rendering. Now uh, we should see uh, uh, a drop in temperature. However, that's not important. Important is it's working since days now. So it, there should be no memory leak and then stuff like that. It is, it is working. This is good. Here I already put in the the buttons, so I'm using going to use seven buttons for testing. Yeah, and I all connected them to ground here. So on the other side, I have here a 10k resistor, and I put this 10k resistor between plus three to three volt, which is actually here. I will take it simply from here and here. All right. And here, this is the this is the point from where I go to the analog input. A zero. If it's under here. Good. And the only thing I have to do is to put uh, also 1K resistors in between. Then we should have exactly the desired behavior, right? So from here. To here. Mm -hmm. From here. So I need six resistors. For the seven buttons, because the last one is zero. Between six buttons, there are six spaces, right? Ah, between seven buttons, there are six space spaces. This would be the correct <laughs> sentence. All right, and now I should be able to read in different values at this A0 here. Yeah. Mm. Depending on the button I'm going to press. Let's code this. I've already prepared a, a, a library. Yeah, I want to show it to you. So, at the computer, I'm going to add my library. I called it analog button. Uh, analog button, here it is. Let's open the thing to show you. I have an analog button. I need the pin number, of course. Uh, I need the base art, is in our case 10K. I need one R. This is 1K resistor between the buttons, right? I need the button count and I have a check time. So I always do it check and check and check and check. Time.h cannot be. Ah, this will this will be resolved, I hope. Yeah. So let's see. Chart object I can close. This is working. Let's see. So I am going to make an analog button. 
Ja. Buttons. Pin is A0. Then I have a 10K. I have a 1K. And I have seven buttons. And I want to check them, I don't know, every 150 milliseconds. All right. And here just have to check somewhere. Uh, int button equals buttons dot get button good uh, if button bigger or equal to zero zero dot print I'll just put it out that, that we know so I should I should get a number and I also have this battery voltage I call it base value buttons dot get base value All right. <laughs> no blood. Maybe in the meantime I can explain. Every time I get, I'm calling the get button. Every time the timeout is timed out, I'm reading the analog input of the pin number. Okay. If this analog input read was bigger than the actual base number, this no button can be pressed because the the value can only get so smaller. Yeah. So this means if it's bigger than the base value, then the base value, this is already the new base value. So it's returning minus one. Yeah. Then I'm calculating the delta value. So how many, how many is in between? Yeah. So this is the base value yeah, multiplied by the ratio of, of my resistors, the button R to the base R. It's one to 10 here. Yeah. It's one to 10 in this case. And uh, if the read value is smaller than half of this delta value, we are at zero, I would say. So I'm returning zero. Then I say I is the button count. Wait, button eight pressed. Button eight pressed. <laughs> there is no button eight. Probably this is wrong. Yeah. I is the button count. Let's upload this. I is the button count. The check value is the running, yeah, multiplied by this and minus delta, a delta. So I'm always dividing this in the half of the, of the step. And if the read value is bigger than the check value, so I'm starting at the, the top. Okay. I'm starting at the top. Uh, if the read value is bigger than the check value, I return this button. Yeah. If not, I reduce up, I am bigger than zero. As long as bigger than zero, I will do that. Yeah? If I have not found any button, then the base value, this must be the base, button seven pressed. This is not working well. Now you get the idea, now it's, okay. Let's do it not that often. Let's do it every second. And let's make some Pooh. This is not every second. Let's print a lot of stuff out. Why is it not printed out?
Just remove these lines. I want to see. I want to see those printers. Why are not those printers? No, they are. Button count minus one. This is correct. Because seven, it's... I'll make it like that. I minus one. This is better. I like it more. Because if I'm at button seven, I only have six times. Six to ten. Six to ten. Right? If I'm pressing the button seven, I only have six to ten. This is good. Why is check valve zero? Delta valve is also zero. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Hands. Man, God. This is nice. But this is how it should look like. I have to multiply and then divide because one tenth is already zero, so it's always zero. Way God, integer calculation again, again. This never gets old. What is still not working is this time out value. It's not this the button one. Can it close? Huh? Button one, yes. Button two, button three, also button three, button four, also button four. Ah, oh, this cannot be calculated like that. Fifteen, by fourteen. I see the nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course, this delta value is not constant. Delta value is not constant. All right, but why is the timeout not working? Timeout, why is this not working? Is the timeout value? Why is this not working? <sighs> One thousand. Ah so, haha, <laughs> this is witzig. I should do this at the beginning. Man, God, another classical Heinz.
I have to tap the delta value as well. Now hopefully it's working. Hopefully. My guessing and programming. Now I'm coding. <laughs> Dirty. Dirty. To think a little bit more. Turn this off and after work I'll try it a little bit better, hopefully. So, this was yesterday. Ah, and I thought, <laughs> I, I, I was wrong. Yeah, I did two stupid uh, two things which caused this error. Uh, and I thought maybe I should reshoot these things. And then I thought, nah, no, I want to show what is wrong, yeah, because, you know, you're using the negatives to develop, yeah, make an error, learn from it. And, and it was, I'm going to explain it, it's just stupid. First, I realized I haven't even built it like it was planned. Yeah, this was the plan and I built it another way. So I show you now how I built it. Yeah. <laughs> So I call it the Digital Analog Input Realization. The analog button, I call it analog button. Implementation. All right. So first thing that I have not built it like it should be. Yeah? So how how is it built now? We have here for but then we have our 10k resistor, yeah? and then I make made a series of resistors one, two, three, and so on. Yeah. Here we were entering the analog input. <laughs> and then I made here connection to ground. And here I made the buttons inside. This is how this looked like. Looks now here. Yeah. Compared to here, yeah. it's the other way around. Yeah. So here we have 10k. Here we have 1k ohm, of course. This is how it imp was implemented, and now if I press this button, I have here zero volts. Huh? I have a zero volts. Okay. Yeah. So this first button is zero volts. Yeah. I will call the buttons uh, zero, one, two, three, n. 
n minus 1. Alright? So, button n, button 0. Zero volts. Button one. Button one. We have a uh, one divided by ten. One divided by ten. Multiplied by v part. This is still all right. Yeah, this is why this button also was working. Yeah. Two and now. It's a voltage divider. Yeah. It's also wrong. Then divided, it's eleven. Because the the whole the whole is eleven oh, oh, kilo ohm now. Huh? Not then. Did the same mistake again. I calculated so many voltage dividers in my life and now I'm making mistakes. I don't know what's happening. But uh, one, one to eleven. That's this. And now we have two to twelve. Yeah. Three. 3 to 13. It's 13. Also, the lower part of the fraction. Yeah? And so we have n minus 1. It's n minus 1 divided by 10 plus n minus 1. Yeah? And n n divided by 10 plus n. That's it. Yeah? That's it. Yeah, so we have seven buttons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I actually, it would be just one more. Yeah. So if this is the button seven, if this is the button seven, I would use seven divided by 17, multiplied by the base value. Okay. Yeah. And now I'm going to implement this, hopefully, this time. Okay, how do I implement this? Better because I also want, do not want to have this here. This is just stupid. This is all right. And now I will do Unsigned int upper range is the base value. The upper range is first the base value. Then I will enter this button count. Okay? If i is bigger than zero, bigger bigger equal to zero, I also want to check zero. Yeah? Uh, expected. Expected value. How was this? It's this base value multiplied by i divided by i times this r button r divided by this i times this button r plus this base r. This is the expected value. Right. 
The upper value is the value of the above thing. Unsigned, lower value, that's i minus 1. Put this out. I don't need this here. This is the uncertainty value. Yeah. Start at zero. I have to check. I really don't understand what is going on. What is this time? Or do I? Is this not? For me, it looks like I have the wrong, the wrong unlock button. Let's see. What is there happening? Did not even compile before. I have changed nothing. I, I'm not sure. These those things do too many things automatic. All right, there is somewhere now. I for sure use the long library, this analog button, because the library is copied in the in the project directory, and it seems like it was not remembering that it was copied in the project directory. Maybe I made a mistake by not saving the the uh, project or something like this. This is really, sometimes this automatism is too much. Eh? It's doing things and then you have to fix it. I don't like that. I want to do it my way. And then I know what I'm doing. And not some, some smart program. Smart. Okay. Answer this was maybe a bad idea. Button two pressed. Button three pressed. Button five. Button six, button seven. All right, what is going on here? Limit. Read while 16, expected zero. Lower. Why is the lower value? I equals I zero. Expected zero. The lower is that high. Why is lower that high? What's happening there? 1024 multiplied by minus 1 multiplied by this button R. <coughs> this is 1 divided by minus 1 times 1 
plus 10 minus 113. Why is this such a big? Ooh, int lower value, but it's an integer. Why is it big value? Ah, now it started. Something happened. I don't trust the system. Even I'm pretty sure I made mistakes somewhere, but this is crap. Lower, look at that. It's like it would be an unsigned integer. Why is it an unsigned integer? Make it along. See if this is not changing something. Why is this an unsigned integer? Why is it that big? It's not what it's written there. It's not what it's written there. This is crap. This is acting like an unsigned integer. Why is this? Why? Low is now 93. It should be minus 93. It should be minus 93. Lower value times equals minus 1. I multiply it with minus one. This cannot be wrong. It's an integer variable. I'm allowed to have negative numbers. Now it's working. So. Six, five, three, two, one, zero. Seven buttons. I said seven buttons, right? Seven buttons. This I can remove now. Probably have a small offset. <laughs> Read what is sixteen. Why at fourteen? Why at say ninety seven? Two hundred sixty five. Three hundred twenty two. Here's expected zero. All right, expected zero. Sixteen we have. Here's expected ninety-three. We have one hundred fourteen. Too much. It seems like it's not very linear. Very too much because we we are expecting. 93, but we have 114. Here we're expecting 170. We have 197. And here we're flipping. This must be 4. We should expect 292, but we have 325. Something wrong with the zero? Zero. Why is that? What is wrong here? Measure the measure the resistors. Maybe some some resistor is wrong. Let's say this here. Ooh. 
סיף. פועל סיף. תנקי. הרסיסטס הוא קורקט. If I press this button here, I have three times, one, two, three times, 1K. Okay. Now I have four times 1K. I still have five. One, two, three, four. So we have 14K. Let's calculate this. We have 14K, four divided by 14. times 100, 292. Uh, this is this what I expect. This is correct. And reading 300. Hmm. I think I'm dealing here with a non-linearity of the ADC. This is correct. How to do this? It's maybe the voltage changing. I should see flicker in the 3.29. It's not the voltage. Let's make it three quarter. Huh? Or let's make it four fifth. If I'm too high. This is crap. This is crap. I do not like this. It seems like this ADC here on this uh, 82 ESP 8266 is crap. There's no other way to say it. Button 0, button 1, button 2. Three, four, five, six. All right, well, that's the way it is. That's the way it is then. At least it's working. At least it's working. Let's see if it's really working. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's remove all the serial prints here. I want to make this faster. Let's see. Zero pressed, one pressed, two pressed, three pressed, four pressed, five, six. Okay, this is good, and if I make it faster, I have probably the issue that I'm always getting a lot of. Would be nice, actually, if I only get one button press. Hmm. But one thing I still want to try, how is this behaving with lower battery? Time is money, but I don't care. I have to use here battery pack. I have here prepared already two already pretty low voltage batteries. Battery case. The yeah, accumulators. But one best. Okay, this is looking good. And now, now I am entering. I'm putting in here 
I'm putting uh, batteries on the floor and now I'm <laughs> adding them here. And here, how many volts do I have? Let's see. Here we have 3. Dot something, yeah, 3. Dot 29 I've just measured. And here in the battery pack, I only have zero. No, I don't believe that. 2.46. Alright. Does not sound too, too bad. So what I'm going to do is I will remove this here. Yeah. Clickety clack. And I will set this to here. But I will not use the batteries, I will use here. This this device, why not? So let's say two volts, only two volts. Aha. Now I'm testing. Because I you know this we are pretty close to the to the limit of this. I really don't like this. Okay. Let's see. This I have to connect to ground. Ground is ground. Reference voltage must be connected, right? Ground. All right. And the other one, the plus side, I'm connecting to here. What is now the base value? It's not reacting anyway. So plug it to ground, plug it to plus. Base value 686. All right, and now button zero press, button one, two, three, four, five. All right, at least at only two volts, it's still working. So at 1.8 volts, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, you haven't seen it. Here, only 1.8 volts. I have adjusted here only 1.8 volts. Huh? So this should be if the accumulator is really empty here. This one. Yeah. So we're below, and it's still working. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Finally. And I can trust the base value, right? I can trust the base value. 740. I will still put this out here, base value, and see <laughs> if it's changing when I'm turning here, the knob. Then at least the function is given that that we can monitor the the voltage as well. Yeah, the base value is following. <laughs> Good, solved. Hours later. All right, what I really don't like is that I press the button, I get the press all the time. It would be nice if we would implement such a thing that we press the button, then we get it one time, one time trigger, huh? and then after a while it will fire repeatedly. So if I keep the button pressed, it will... Yeah? So we make... This I want to implement next time. In this in this uh, analog button uh, in this analog button class, therefore I've written the class to, to, to change the class and then everything's fine. Good for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.